if your classic Mercedes heating and cooling seems to work as a binary system, that it's either blowing hot or cold and has no in-between, this video is for you. A viewer recently emailed me and pointed out that there's a little aluminum box up behind the glove box, very similar to the cruise control amplifier if you've watched my series on repairing the cruise control on my Mercedes. What tends to happen as the cars age is you either get scorching hot air or freezing cold air out of the vents and there is no modulation. There's no in between. It's either on or off and that typically comes down to this little silver box. So let me show you where this thing is. In order to get to this automatic climate box, we're gonna to have to open our glove box. And look, here's the screwdriver that we need already inside. Now our glove box is held on by these little locking tab things. So basically we're gonna take a small screwdriver and get in between that and just carefully pry up. You don't wanna break this tab, just Work it up out of there. You may have better luck once you get it up a little ways to grab it with your fingers and just pull it out. Then this next one, you can either get a screwdriver under or use your fingers, pop that out. And there we have our locking tabs out. Now next we need to look up in at our glove box light. We can get in right here at the front and pry down Pull this out so that we've got some of this loose wire here because ultimately we're going to have to tuck this whole thing up through that hole but we can't do that until this liner all of this material here is pulled out so let me show you what we do to do that we need to pull down on the top of this so that it will clear the latch up here and then just pull the whole thing towards us once you get it out far enough then we can snake our light up through there and pull it out. Set that off to the side. If we come back in here, right, I mean, immediately you can see this silver box is our climate control box. And in order to remove that, we have one Phillips screw right up here in the front. I'm trying to feel it right there. We have one Phillips screw we remove that and it will come down. We can pull the connector off and remove it from our car. With our temperature regulator box removed, opening it up is very similar to our cruise control amplifier. We just need to get a flat screwdriver in here and pry these little locking tabs on the aluminum box away. There's four of them. Then we can grab our plastic part, slide our circuit board out. See there's little channels in there where it's supposed to ride in. Once your board is out of the metal case, there are at least two different styles of board. This style right here, I have the information on the screen for right now, which capacitors there are, what the values are. If you have a board that doesn't look like this, check the website, trythistv.com slash W123climate. Uh, it's linked down here in the video, as well as in the description and the comments down below this video. There we'll have the most up-to-date information as I get reports of what these things look like and the variety of models that we may see through the various years that our cars were made. Uh, but repairing this is a pretty simple task. It's very similar to the cruise control amplifier repair videos. So if you haven't watched the video on repairing your cruise, go and check that out because that's another great creature feature to have working on your 123. Uh, basically with this, we're just going to start desoldering these capacitors and soldering new ones. You see there we've got holes through where our capacitor was. There's negative marked on this side, positive on this side, so we can get our new capacitor and install there. Now what I did for these, because finding a axial capacitor in this size, these were 
prohibitively expensive. They were like 10 bucks a piece, which is a little more than I wanted to spend. What you can do is grab a radial capacitor and take the leads, bend them to the sides, bend them down, and use capacitor like this in here. Now if you are going to do something like that for your uh, radial capacitors or axial, I, I always get the two mixed up. If you're going to replace this style with the leads on either end with one that has the leads on both ends, take a hot glue gun and glue this down so that it doesn't wiggle around and cause trouble after you've soldered it in place. But pretty much at that point, once you've got these in here, it's the same as the cruise control. Just take and solder these new capacitors in. Trim off those leads. And then repeat that with all the other capacitors on the board. And again, that's on the screen as well as at trythistv.com slash W123climate. Now, I'm going to go and replace all the rest of these, put this back in our box, and put it back in the car and see what we've got going on. I'll get our case and we'll slide this back in to the little traps all the way back down in. Now we just need to kind of push these little tabs back over a bit so that it holds our end on there. Taken and just rolling those in just a little bit from either direction so that they sit in where they're supposed to be. One didn't quite get in there happy, but that's okay. While you're back in here putting this temperature regulator box back in, you should check out the state of your tube for the automatic sensor. So this here, see somebody has put some pipe plumbing stuff on there. So the split loom has a little bit more snug of a fit and it fits on there really nice and will move our air past that temperature sensor to make sure that we're getting perfect, non-binary, but a nice linear temperature regulation of our climate control system. So now let's put our climate control box back in up here, plug it in, pull the car out of the shop and see how this thing works. With our climate control box reinstalled in our glove box, I'm excited to announce that my climate control works. It varies the fan speed automatically, and it varies the temperature automatically. So this is actually working how it's supposed to be for the first time since I've had this car. So it it slows it down and gets cooler. Here, let me show you. Of course, you're not you're not going to be able to feel the temperature difference. You're just going to have to take my word for it. Let's check it out. So right here, this is the temperature I've had it set on. And it's just blowing a little bit of moderately warm air. But if I just kick it up a little bit, before to get heat, I'd have to go all the way to max. And now I don't need to. You go up a little bit on that. And after it senses, it will automatically kick the fan speed up and start blowing heat. Yeah, it's getting warmer already. Fan speed hasn't kicked up. I'm not entirely sure how it's all supposed to work. I know that the fan will vary automatically and the temperature will vary automatically. And the temperature has definitely changed coming out of our vents. And our fan speed hasn't probably have to go more. There's probably a set point. Yeah, see right there. Now the fan speed has kicked up. Yeah, now we're getting nice roasty toasty air out of all the vents that we should be. If we turn it back down, see the fans coming up even more. But 
but now that I turned it down a smidgen, the temperature isn't as hot either, so that's pretty cool. Seems like it's these little creature comfort things that fail on these cars. It's the electronics of the 80s that were impressive for the time, but not the most robust in lasting forever. I mean, capacitors fail in everything though, so hopefully this has been helpful. Gets your climate control back automatic like it should have been back in the 80s. Thanks for watching.